So customers will again give you the feedback about the product. So the product design will be again improved. So that's how this, you know, this typical product cycle is something which is uh, which becomes a, some sort of I'll say it will become some sort of continuous process. Correct? So from this uh, slide I want to give you an idea that what do you see here that every box here is a 40 hours, 50 hours codes. Correct? And our emphasis in the beginning will be on this box that is design evaluation. Why? How to design? So in the beginning the 3D printing processes which you are calling today in the beginning they were developed as a RP. They were developed as a rapid prototyping, which was actually a design tool. It was not a manufacturing tool in the beginning. Now move to next slide now. What is prototyping? Prototyping or model making is one of the important steps to finalize product. It helps in conceptualization of a design. Before the start of full production, a prototype is usually fabricated and tested. Correct? So, so like the manual prototyping used to be an age-old practice. It was very old practice, and the pro prototype used to be developed by the skilled craftsmen. Correct? So the skilled craftsmen used to uh, develop this uh, uh, prototype. Correct? So they used to take very long time in developing these prototypes. That's the, that is something which is important to note and that's why this step used to take very long time. So, then the second phase of prototyping, that was soft prototyping actually. It became possible when uh, the age of 3D curves and surfaces uh, could be developed using software and they could be stressed in virtual environments and simulation is being done. So basically what you are doing, you are, you, are, you are making, you are designing the product in a virtual environment and applying loads and try to understand its performance. So that is something which is called virtual prototyping, correct? So that was the second phase of prototyping. And the latest trend in prototyping is the rapid prototyping, which is that nothing but layer by layer material. So, this 3D printing was developed as, as a rapid prototyping and that was done by layer by layer material deposition. It has become possible due to the enormous growth in computer design and computer manufacture and of course the automation technologies. So, let us try to understand the approaches. Like if you have to produce a component like this, the way it has been shown here, you can do machining. Machining is nothing but removal of the material. You all know about it. The second approach may be that you can join the two blocks and you can get the... The third approach may be that you can deform the material. That is known as whole performing. But here in this method, we try to do the bottom-up approach that is we try to do the deposition of the material from bottom to the top. So this is something uh, which is being done and is known as rapid prototyping. So uh, in this rapid prototyping, uh, the idea here is that we start with the CAD model. Correct? So the, this is the important point that the starting is from CAD model. So we make CAD model Then just to make you understand, we cut this model by horizontal plane. So you are slicing the model. Right? So this is how you have sliced. Now if you see the difference in these two figures, this Z direction, that is the vertical direction, that approximation has been removed. The, all the edges have been squared. So this is the difference, correct? Right? And appreciate everything. And then, uh, 
Suppose what you do, you take some thick paper or plastic sheet or maybe metal sheet and cut these layers using some snipper and then stake these sheets one over another from bottom to the top. You see, you get a free prototype like this. So if you compare the two, then it, uh, we'll call it as a rapid prototype. So actually you can see because we have done the squaring of edges. So this can be separate there and the, the geometry does not conform completely. So we have the step tracing effect. Now this step tracing effect will be more dominant. If you have thicker layers, and this will be very less dominant and almost negligible. Layers are thick. But it becomes very this this will become less dominant or almost eliminated. So but sometimes what we do, we do some secondary operations in order to improve the surface quality, in order to remove the staircase effects, two operations too. Try to do this and we get the things done. Okay, so uh, this RP process chain, the, the, what we call it as the CAD modeling of the part. So we put CAD modeling of the part in a computer and then we do slicing. Correct? So in between the two steps, we have a step for tessellation. Like any part file, any CAD model, which you model using is any solid modeling software, is in .prt uh, this thing. So in this .prt mode, this tessellation file, .stl file, it can be We save this uh, CAD model into STL file, that is the tessellation file. I will tell you what is tessellation. Uh, approximation of the surface, we belong to this CAD model, small transfer. So we do that. And then we slice. Slicing is nothing but intersection of horizontal planes. So it results into a 3D polygons. That's what we try to do, and we get this slicing being done. Then uh, what do we get is the, then this is called digital model. This is layered model, correct? This is generation of layered model. So after this step, we have the digital definitions of the slices. And these defin definitions are used by a RP system, which is also called now it is a 3D printer, in which you are going to fed this information, but this information will be processed by some step in between, correct? And this step will depend on the kind of propulsion technology you are having, the generation of laser scanning paths or the material propulsion paths are something which you have to consider, correct? So the calculation is done by a software once again, which may be embedded with the 3D printer or sometimes outside also and it is used to uh, drive this 3D printer to basically get the physical model of the uh, material. So what are these 3D printers and how they work and what are the technologies that I will be describing in, the, in my forthcoming slides. Okay, now the once you get this 3D printer, a 3D printed component or rapid prototype, you need to finish it. You need to finish that thing Sometimes you have to post process, sometimes you have to remove the support structures and then you try to see that with the physical prototype, the test is okay, then it's fine. Otherwise, if the drawbacks are found, you again go back and change your CAD modeling and you repeat the process once again. So this is called rapid prototyping process chain. So here, uh, the Solid modeling, so this is an example of a solid model. This is a solid model. I want to produce this component. So this is a solid modeling done in some software. This is the example of tessellation. So suppose there is some surface like this. This 
is a free form surface where you have free spline kind of surface or nerves so once this is a free spline kind of surface you try to uh, uh, approximate the surface by small small triangles and uh then so this this actual if you see the small v1 v2 v3 triangle so this is the triangle here and actual surface is actually the surface which has been given below so there's a deviation this deviation is called delta this delta deviation is called quartal error or the maximum specific deviation so this delta is an important parameter because bigger is the delta you choose bigger will be the size of triangles so it will be a rough rough approximation it will be a coarse approximation and you may lose the intent of the design so that's why delta selection is something which is very important if we use very small delta then so many very very small triangles will be there to 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 approximate the surface and I'm, and you will have a huge stl file huge tessellated file and and that will cost you a lot in terms of slicing a lot of computation will be there so many redundant data will be there so so many things you have to consider so that's why selection of this delta parameter is important because you have to you have to approximate but at the same time you are not supposed to lose the intent of the design okay now uh, this is the example which talks about slicing so what is slicing this stl file which you which you get this stl file you need to uh, slice correct so what do you do in slicing in slicing you you try to intersect the horizontal planes correct so you try to intersect the horizontal planes with the stl file. so suppose this is the stl file and you try to intersect with the horizontal planes correct so you get basically the polygons so getting the polygons and these polygons are nested polygons correct because if you see here you have the polygon and there will be one more polygon inside it so there will be polygons and nested polygons and please note once they are nested they cannot cross each other that is something which you can visualize because in a natural component this uh, this this will never cross each other so on this figure uh, you can see that the slices have been shown the same component have have been uh, shown in a what by z axis like this and x y plane here so it is a vertical in vertical vertical direction like this it has been shown so these are the slices now you can see here that some slices are thicker thick slices are there and here in this zone and then again in this zone the slices are thin so this generally in any existing today's 3d printing technology in one go you have only one slice thickness that you can deposit you cannot deposit the way i have shown you in this picture correct okay? this way of deposition is called adaptive slicing correct okay? so because you have variable slice thickness and why the slice thickness is variable because in order to have better surface for best possible surface quality uh, due to step stepping effect so here the stair stepping effect is likely to be dominant so we are we are uh, slicing with very thin slices here because the things are vertical so we can use thick slices so basically what we are doing we are using the combination of thicker slices and the thinner slices in such a way that we are able to minimize the stair stepping effect and that's how we are able to achieve the uh, Uh, quite good quality surface uh, using using 3D printing. So this is what we call 3D printing. Correct. So the, but please note that we do not have any technology today, though a lot of advancement has taken place, which can deposit a component like this. This is a concept that is the adaptive slicing. 
The reason is it is an open challenge for all of you. It is a, the reason is that developing such machine is requires a lot of optimization and at every stage because if you want to deposit every next layer as a new layer thickness, you have to use a different set of process parameters and uh, they have to adaptively calculate it and change. So that's that may be probably the reason people could not develop such kind of machine with it. Then we have generation of laser scanning paths or material deposition paths. That is the another step, next step. So when you really want to deposit the component, uh, what you have to do is you, you need to, you will use one of the technologies, correct? The various technologies for deposition of layers are, they are liquid based technologies or powder based technologies or solid based technologies. So these are the three categories that you need to try to deposit the 3D printers. So the first 3D printer which was developed uh, was liquid based only, correct? So that was known as stereo lithography and it uses a liquid polymer and that liquid polymer is deposited layer by layer. I will tell you in my next slide how to be done. And then you can use powder, like laser sintering is one of the process where either you can use metal powder, you can use polymer powder, and the laser is used to sinter. You can use a wire, a filament uh, of plastic to deposit the material or you can, you can use a, some sort of sheets uh, and cut them and deposit one or another that is known as laminated object manufacturing. So whatsoever you want to do, you have to, if you are using laser, you, you have to develop, generate the laser scanning, you have to calculate the uh, laser scanning paths if you are using fuse deposition modeling kind of 3D printer, you have to calculate the, the, the material deposition paths. So depending upon the kind of technology you are using, uh, you have to you have to decide the the uh, this, this step that what really you want to calculate, you want to calculate laser scanning paths or the material deposition paths. It's a very important step because, and this step is performed, sometimes you have a process software that may be an integrated part of your additive manufacturing system. That process software will calculate these things. Otherwise, sometimes uh, in, there are many open source softwares also nowadays available. So, uh, the, the FDM printers uh, or maybe the other printers which are a little economical, you will have open source software which will do this calculation for you and then the calculation will be used to drive the 3D printer. So, so that's, this is a very important point because many processing parameters are being selected, you know, during, uh, during this step. So it becomes an important parameter for, for us to understand and definitely the software, uh, whether it is a software in the machine or, uh, or it is outside the machine, it is an open source software that will give you the, the way that you can do it. Okay, so uh, I think I am audible to everybody and uh, and uh, I am... Uh, yes sir, you are audible. Yes sir, are able to understand what I am saying? Yes. Am I correct? Yeah, yeah, completely. Uh, so any question, if there is any question. So if you have any questions from participant, please just unmute yourself and ask. Yeah, you can ask me so that I can also have a little brief and then I can start from yeah. So from this part of my presentation, if you have any question, you can ask. If you are having any question, then please uh, just unmute yourself and then you can ask. Yeah. Uh, I don't understand the laser scanning part. Uh, so you can understand. Laser scanning part means it is a layer. 
laser laser spot is like very the diameter of laser spot will be around maybe 200 micrometer correct so it is a focused laser so if you have suppose you have to scan a area of 20 millimeter by 20 millimeter and your laser spot is only 200 micron so what you will do this is the area correct uh it will come back so okay so this is the area correct this is the, this is how the area is so the laser will move like this it will move like this correct so this this will this the, the motion of laser will tell you that uh, uh, you have to calculate that path. Okay. So this is something uh, which you have to understand. My in my next slides uh, you will actually get this information in a better way. Yeah. Anything else? Any other doubt then? Just raise your question, otherwise we will proceed further. Anyone else? No. Uh, sir, we are not having any question at this time. Okay. So, you can see the same slide again, I think? Yeah, it's very really interesting. If you can go and look at this, yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, so the generation of laser scanning paths or material deposition paths, this I have explained. So now I'll explain the processes actually, one by one. So the next step would be post processing, correct? Now, once you get the component, 3D printed component from your printer, you need to finish it. You have to cure it sometimes in case of stereo lithography, we have to do post curing. Now there are some modern processes where you have to do sintering, correct, in an external furnace. Then you have to remove the support structure. Now you all can understand this point that because we are depositing and if if there is if there is an overhanging feature, then you have to develop the support from the bottom. Only then you will be able to a deposit on that support because other if you have not done that then how you can deposit because there is nothing on which you are going to deposit so the plan of the support structure is important and later on when everything has been done you have to remove the support structure then next comes in the finishing by sanding and polishing so definitely in order to improve the surface quality of the prototype you can you can you can do sanding polishing or sometimes you do painting. I'll show you everything in my forthcoming slides that how people are doing it. Okay, so basically you have uh, this physical prototype in your hand in, in a very small time, maybe few hours of time, uh, the moment you start CAD modeling and you do the modeling and you can fire the component, the printer and you will have this printer. That's why we used to call them as rapid now the, uh, the various kinds of data correct, that is being used in case of RP that is I have already told you that you can use a 3D CAD model. Correct? You use 3D CAD model you can make a SQL file and then you go ahead and make your prototype. You can use 2D CAD drawings you can convert it to 3D CAD, you can have the STL file and then you can go ahead with this kind of thing. You can produce your component. The other two are different kinds of application. One is called reversal. Like if I have an old component, I do not have any information about that component. I do not have any data about it. So uh, I will use actually the Scanner. There, is a, there are non-tactile or tactile kind of scanners. We will use those scanners and we will capture the point cloud data. Correct? And this point cloud data uh, we will take and we will 
reverse engineering do the reverse engineering using some software is called the polyworks kind of software and we will do this CAD CAD and then we'll get the STL and we'll so you can see STL is always a common STL becomes a, a de facto standard of without having the STL actually you cannot proceed further that's what will be required so basically we will then have the MRI or CT scan data other other uh, way maybe when we want to go for any biomedical application we start with the kit MRI data or a CT scan data and this MRI scan data or a CT scan data we get uh, from uh, this MRI machines or CT scanners and then there are softwares, some softwares called uh, Linux kind of software where we do the 3D reconstruction how to do a half d reconstruction and then we get basically the STL file and this STL file is used to uh, run the 3D printer and you get the component made. So, uh, we have basically why ARP is important, so this I have already explained, but there have been number of projects which have been done, uh, if you really refer to structure uh, literature, you will appreciate that there are many uh, references where you can understand that if you, if you bring this rapid prototyping as a design tool uh, in your design cycle, then you can reduce the product lead time, product lead time up to uh, up to sometimes up to 90 percent. So like suppose if you, if you can, if you are planning your project to 100 weeks, you may finish it in 20 weeks, you may finish in 30 weeks. So that kinds of time compression one is able to achieve if you use the uh, this prototyping as a design tool and uh, basically you have uh, them as a uh, introduce this RP in a new design product design cycle that's the advantage we achieve so that's the advantage okay then uh, the various uh, processes 3D printing processes you try to see so they are based on the raw material which we used the solid correct uh, liquid these are the two main things. Paste is something which is not very popular, it's not there. And gaseous is some other kind of thing. It's not exactly 3D printing. We do coating using uh, uh, this chemical vapor deposition or maybe some sort of liquid chemical vapor deposition, physical chemical vapor deposition. So using, but here the thing is that if I use solid, Solid may be in the form of wire, it may be in the form of uh, powder, it may be one powder at a time, it may be multi powder, more than one powder at a time, when, or it may be foil. So if it is a wire, it is the most popular process in FDM process. Otherwise, if it is a powder, laser sintering is one of the uh, important process, or otherwise the uh, binding, binder jetting, correct? Binder jetting is another process. If we are using liquid, basically the liquid is to be polymerized. Correct? So once we have to do polymerization, the process of polymerization may be based on thermal polymerization, it may be UV based polymerization, ultraviolet based, it may be laser based polymerization. So that's how we try to actually, you know, have these processes. So now I think I'll explain the various processes to you so that you will get the idea about the, the some important commercial RP uh, processes or 3D printing processes and then uh, I will move to the applications, correct? So uh, I can uh, understand, uh, you can see this figure, uh, this is called stereolithograph, correct? So this, this process was developed uh, very fast. From here only the concept of uh, rapid prototyping or 3D printing actually started. And this machine was patented around 1994. It was patented in 1994, not around. The principle is very simple. 
uh, principle is that you need to have very different kind of material which is called uh, which is called a photo sensitive material correct now the the property of this material is it is actually monomer so when the light light or laser laser is also light so when laser above certain threshold frequency falls on that particular uh, liquid so this h nu h nu is the photon so nu if nu is more than some nu star then wherever this laser will fall uh, below that this this energy or this laser will be absorbed and there will be a polymerization reaction this liquid will start converting into the solid this is what uh, is being observed so uh, because of this property of the monomers that they get converted into polymers when light at a certain threshold frequency falls on that is utilized to they have designed or to to come with this kind of stereolithography system so what is being done in this machine you have this enclosed chamber correct and this is the platform on this platform you are pouring the photosensitive resin the photosensitive resin is being poured how much it is poured in the beginning area multiplied by thickness one thickness one layer thickness so this much only to be poured and then the laser will come from the top and it will move on the surface of the liquid and on this surface of the liquid it will move and uh basically you will have this thing done so this will get get hardened then the platform will move down and again you <coughs> pour the liquid equal to one layer thickness and then again the layer laser will come from the top so you have actually already calculated this where the laser will go so somebody was asking me a question correct so this is the system like you have already calculated now this laser spot has to go so how this laser spot has to move like this so you have to rotate this mirror which is a numerically controlled mirror known as galvano mirror very small size mirror which will rotate and it will deflect the beam on this surface so that calculation has to be performed and that numerical calculation will actually lead to the motion of you know these mirrors uh, am i correct so i think uh, you got the answer of your question so you will keep on depositing one layer next layer third layer fourth layer and so on and if there is a overhanging feature like this as it has been shown in this particular diagram then uh, you are going to deposit the support structure also because if you don't deposit the support structure you won't be able to do this deposition anymore so that's why the support structure is to be deposited uh, in case of stereo lithography and the advantage of this process are that it is a it gives you very high good quality surface correct the resolution of the process is very high because uh, uh, the, the resolving limit is very low i'll say the resolution is high because you it is a liquid based so liquid can be deposited in very thin layers this is the reason you have uh, basically uh, you have slices uh, and uh, you can have good quality surface quality in in these prototypes you can make very small components also using this kind of printer now this in this printer sometimes you have a material and this material is a, can be melted once again correct so you can use this as a pattern uh, to make investment casting mold like various jewelry designs nowadays they are made in this kind of 3d printer and you have a small ring design for example it is made of polymer in the beginning then you will pour, then you will dip in a, some some refractory slurry the shell will be formed and then you can heat it so that this polymer will go away and then you can pour that thing with gold 
so you will get the ring made that kind of thing we do and it is being practiced in reality in in all these modern jewelry manufacturing companies like tanish correct so i have already visited that company and seen this thing happening with my own eyes so this is not a hypothetical concept it is a reality you might have heard that when you go for such modern jewelry it is called casted jewelry this casted jewelry is actually investment casted jewelry that is done through this rapid uh, the steel lithography and then investment followed by investment casting the the, the conventional way of making gold jewelry is through gold wires so there's a gold wire and there's a light lamp and there's a wax lamp and the the jeweler the uh, this gold smith it blows the air from from a pipe and then he is able to manipulate melt the gold and make the designs so that is the conventional way This is the modern way that you can do the investment casting of the gold, and you are able to develop the different designs out for investment casting. Okay, then this is another process uh, which is we call laser sintering, selective laser sintering. Instead of having a liquid, we have raw material here is a powder. So you can see this is a powder free cartridges, correct? Right? And this is a very fine powder of around 150 mic, 50 micron powder, 50 micron powder of polyamide. Polyamide is a polyester uh, powder of 50 microns to 60 microns, that average diameter in size. And then this powder is used to, uh, it is, it is, it is, it is uh, being spread on this platform, and then the. The laser is used uh, from the top, and the scanner is again. This galvanometer is used to deflect the laser beam on the surface of the uh, layer. So here, the mechanism is that the, the particles they they melt either completely or most of the time they melt from their edges, and then they get uh, there's a melting phenomena, and they get you know uh, uh, a bonding between among themselves. the chain kind of thing is being being formed so that's that's what is the mechanism of you know sintering in this process there is no application of pressure in this process correct so this is called also known as powder bed process this is another illustration of the same uh, process that we with so this is the chamber in which the process is conducted and this this chamber is filled with the nitrogen gas in case of polymers sometimes it is ordinary air is also there in economical machines and if you are using metal powder then obviously you have to fill this with argon kind of gas that's the inert gas atmosphere has to be there and then powder spreading is done so first you are spreading the powder so powder is stripped then the laser comes from the top and it scans the area so this brown color thing is actually the hardened material the yellow color powder is the original powder which remains like that only then the platform moves down the platform goes down and then again the platform goes down and you again there is a recoating of layer and again uh, you basically get the powder laser and you keep on doing this process so this this, this process is having one advantage that no support structure has to be planned because This powder is already sitting like a support structure in this case, so you need not to plan any support structure. That is one good thing. Definitely, the surface quality is not that high as it is in studio lithography. But here, the advantage is that we have variety of materials. We have so many materials, and number of materials are being invented, or there's a research going on. People have developed many materials. But if it are available in powder form, you have to do research. You have to find out certain parameters, and you can use them to deposit metals as well as plastic powders. Both are deposited by this process. Uh, uh, but in this process, in, in stereolithography process, uh, the limitation is that very minimum number of materials are available. The choice of material is very low because. We don't have many materials which can give you uh, this thing, correct? 
So that's what we try to do. Okay, then fuel depletion modeling is another process. Many of you might have already seen this kind of printer. So this printer is something uh, which is uh, used. Here actually the raw material is this wire. Okay? This wire is the ABS wire and this ABS wire is uh, something which we use and in this wire, the diameter of the wire is around 1 millimeter or so, but when it comes out it is deposited, the, the minimum layer thickness which we can deposit is of around 0.25 millimeters or one fourth of a millimeter. And most when it so what do you see? When this uh, this wire comes into the nozzle, it there are counter rotating rolls, so it is being drawn in and uh, there are heaters here, so when it comes out, it is molten, correct? It is molten ABS, and there is an XY movement of the nozzle, so we are able to deposit it on this platform. And here also, in this case, you need to deposit support structure. So generally, uh, you will find that every engine system has two nozzles. One is for main material, that is ABS, or other is for the uh, uh, support material that is hips kind of material so basically uh, the in this case also the, the wires are very there are not so many materials which can be used here so we have say abs material we have pva polyvinyl alcohol we have pla that is polylactic acid so, so some people have also gone for peak but for peak you go up to 400 500 degrees celsius temperature correct and uh, that's what, so it is a good process, but the, it is economical, but the limitation is that its resolution is low. You have, because you deposit th little thicker slices, the surface quality is not that good, correct? And people have done many research also in this process. They have used blended sometimes ceramics uh, with the polymer, sometimes they have blended some metal, fine metal particles with this. Uh, powder and screw this wire and deposit it on this platform. So that's the key between molding. This is very economical printer. You can get this kind of printer in maybe one lakh rupees, good quality printer. But the first uh, uh, machine, uh, stresses is the company which, which has done this machine and but their printers are little costly. You will not get anything less than 10 lakhs if you go for stresses. Then let me talk about the laminated object manufacturing. This laminated ob object manufacturing is something uh, where we use the, the sheet kind of thing, right? So we, is, we use a sheet kind of thing and we, uh, so here we can understand that the sheet material on this platform, the sheet is glued or it is being laminated by application of heat through this laminating roller and then the laser comes from the top and laser cuts the material here. So please use the function of laser is different here. In this process the laser is used to cut the material and so here actually this is required ring and all other is a waste material so this cross has to then this will go away this side the platform will go down again this one this sheet will move and Again, the roller will be laminating on the top of that. Laser will come from the top to cut. That's how you are able to actually, you know, keep on doing this process. So you get basically a cube kind of thing. And then you have to remove by some tools all these materials. This cross has things. So you basically get the the uh, get the prototype done. So again, I'll say that the resolution of this prototype is uh, very low. You get rough prototypes, mainly it is used to make mock models, bigger size, you know, mock models uh, for displaying purpose. That's what we do with laminated object manufacturing. Okay, then let me come to one very important, one of the recent development in the area of 3D printing. That is called laser engineering. So this is a powder blown kind of system, correct? Right? And what, so in the beginning, uh, this this process was developed around 2006 only, not so old. And 
two parallel developments took place. One is in Sandia National University Laboratory in the US, another is in Michigan University, and it is called DMD system. So laser engineered net shaping system or direct metal deposition system or direct energy deposition system, these are similar. So what is being done here, actually there is a conical channel here. The conical channel and the metal powder comes down through, uh, it's suspended in argon kind of gas and then there is a center, from the center the laser comes and whenever they interact here, there is a fine droplet, molten, a molten uh, liquid is being, this comes out and it is being deposited on this platform and in, in, on this platform you have very good uh, conformal cooling channels to remove the heat because you have to effectively do the solidification and you can deposit the material here. So you have basically this kind of thing. You are able to deposit these kinds of structures, this is thin walled structure, it's a thick walled structure, the housing kind of thing. So we are able to do that, correct? So that's how uh, we are able to we are able to understand uh, these things. And now, so, so this is one of the latest developments. So different processes have been developed, like lens is one name, another is called DMD, direct metal deposition, direct energy deposition, laser metal deposition, deposition LMD. There will be little difference, but in general the principle remains the same. Other than this, there is one more process, a modern process, which is called as EDAM, electron beam additive manufacturing. So the electron beam additive manufacturing works on the principle of this process, correct? Instead of having uh, this laser uh, here, we use electron beam to center the material, that is called electron beam additive manufacturing, so you get better accuracy in the case of electron beam manufacturing. Then we, people have developed processes, metal additive manufacturing processes based on wires, on melting of metal wires. Uh, the concept will be similar to MIG kind of situation, metal inert gas welding. There are some commercial systems also which have come into the market. So metal, uh, so that is called VAM, wire arc additive manufacturing, W-double-A-M, wire arc additive manufacturing. So basically you have a metal metal, continuous metal, uh, metallic wire, uh, that's the way you have in big welding and it is being melted and deposited the way you in this process, that is called BAM. So those processes are also coming uh, as a commercial system, they have their own pros and cons, correct? Like here I would like to show you for this process, for lens process, the, the, the process zone that this is the nozzle, the laser is coming from the center and the powder is coming and once they are uh, interacting, basically uh, you are having a position and uh, on this wheel, which is a warm wheel, correct, which is being prepared using this, this process. So this, this kind of process, this is a powder blown process, they can also be used to repair the uh, for repair also they can be used the way it has been shown in this particular picture. So for repairing what do you need? You need a CAD, original CAD model. Then you need the CAD model of the warm wheel. And you have to do the Boolean operations to get the CAD model of the warm portion. And that warm portion CAD model you can use to fill using this kind of process. That is the later laser metal deposition. Now this is a, a processing zone of powder blown process, correct? So this is some, some sort of aluminium powder or maybe titanium powder and the laser is coming, this, the powder has been spread on the platform. The laser is coming from the top and it is, it, it is so here you can see the deposition has taken place, this is, this is free powder, correct? That's how the component has been developed. Definitely the surface quality is better in this case than this case, correct? Okay, so uh, this is one hour by now. Uh, you can have some questions now once again before really going to the application part. I, I would invite the questions. If you have some questions, uh, we can discuss and then I'll speak for another 15 minutes. Yeah, so it's a 10 minutes break now.
So please uh, let me know if there are questions in between. Yes, sir. so participants, uh, you can unmute yourself and ask questions one by one if you have. Those who are here, they can please ask the questions related to the. You can you can uh, drop your message in the chat box if you want to. Uh, Professor, uh, a question I have received is, uh, what is this uh, 2.5D in the terminology of uh, 3D printing? And is it, is it uh, audible to you, sir? Yes, yes. So, there are no questions, so let's wait. I need some rest actually. But if yeah. I continuously cannot speak. So, no, 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 no. no. Meanwhile, uh, meanwhile uh, those who are the participants, I have a few uh, videos for you is, uh, the, in applications related to the 3D printing that I will showcase. So, till that time, just keep here so that uh, the professor will take 5 10 minutes break. After that, we will start. Okay? So, please be here. Just a minute. Uh, is a multi-material 3D printer that at the moment we are specializing in food. Why food? Because uh, it's a very big challenge to print food. Uh, the viscosity of the materials, the whole complex... Uh, Jignes sir, is it visible properly? Jignes sir? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yes, sir. Yes, sir. The system of making something that will taste good as well, not just the presentation, is our goal to reach. For us to achieve this, we realize that we cannot just have the technical part. We need real chefs to collaborate with us. So in every city that we move to, we contact people before we arrive, before we do our venue in a 3D print show, local chefs that can come and share their knowledge and uh, somehow merge with us to come with an end result that is not just attractive, but tasty. Uh, at this venue, we've been trying five to six different uh, products, uh, consumables. Uh, we started with the first trial of foie gras, duck liver, and uh, it amazingly came uh, tasty and uh, the presentation was quite good as well. Uh, last experiment we're doing is with uh, jelly, is fruit jelly made out of lychee and uh, we can add any color we want to it and the composition is really wobbling and it's a very 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 special feeling in your mouth who is um, who is this printer aimed at who should buy this this printer is aimed at the consumer market uh, at the end consumer market but also as an industrial which will be a chef for example uh, it's a multi-material printer therefore i can change the nozzle in 30 seconds. It goes by a magnetic, so it's very easy to replace it. And I'm printing from chocolate, I pass to PLA. From PLA, I can print also ABS. And we're working in a concept of a granulate extruder, which will decrease the price in about 40 to 50% compared to filament. 
Plus, you can use any multi-material you want, and the end result is, big, is, is, is better definition than what we can achieve right now. How fast is the printer? How fast uh, can I print, uh, let's say, a uh, chocolate thingy? We all struggling with the same problem. Printers are slow. 3D printing is slow at the moment. We vision a future where it will be fast, faster than the human end. At the moment, it can't be compared. So our our approach to it is, we make a concept, uh, we we'll make a product concept, and if we really like it, we immediately make a mold. So we can make as many as we want from that one. So there's two approaches to do it, or one single item which will be like an art piece almost and if you like it you start to make molds you make a mold out of abs the positive and you make silicon eating uh, food silicon that can be used as mold how complex is it for a chef because you have usually have to um, have um, cut knowledge is it complex to do uh, the first designs on this one It's very complex. The designs are same as any other printer. You can use different platforms, SolidWorks, uh, Slick 3D, any other program. So our approach to it is that if we sell the printer to a chef, we will give him, for example, one year that he can give us any idea he has, or by draw, or by picture, or just by mentioning it, and we will produce the STL file for him free. After that, we will create a cost price for item or packages that will be attractive for the chef to remain working with us. Uh, although we can also download any STL online and use it in the printer. Thank you very much. That's great. So thank you audience uh, for watching this. Uh, Pandey sir, can I play one more video if you permit? That is really yeah, yeah. So this content has been shared by uh, Dr. Y. Ravi Kumar sir from NIT Warangal. He was the, one of the expertise in this field. So he said this thing. So I am sharing the another content which is related to the 3D printed cloth at home. So just watch this uh, video. You will get the insight of this thing. And I will share these things in your chat box as well. My name is Denise Pele. I just graduated from Shankar College of Design. I wanted to create a ready-to-wear collection printed entirely at home, using printers that anyone can get. I've spent the past year searching for the best solution. I worked with leading experts in the field. I really like the result. It looks a little bit like lace. And it moves beautifully. the potential. If you're called print your own jacket, traveling with no luggage, just print your clothes in the hotel room. Will we soon be able to design, share and print our own clothes directly from home? So let me start now. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Okay, so the application part let me go to application part you have already seen two videos uh, just now and uh, you had some idea about the application 
uh, but there are many other applications and i will focus mainly on the uh, engineering applications uh, or biomedical engineering applications so we can do we, there is an application in design i have already told you that it is a design tool so we have so many design applications then we have applications in terms of engineering analysis and planning so we we have uh, we can develop form and fit models we can do uh, the flow analysis in any wind tunnel we can make a model suppose some aerofoil section or maybe some other kind of section we have developed using 3d printing and that can be kept in a in a uh, this thing that can be kept in a wind tunnel and you can study the behavior and then stress distribution so there are different polymers uh, which can be used Uh, and uh, you can you can do it the stress distribution study uh, in a polarizer using optical polarizer bench so that is experimental stress technique that so you can understand the what is the stress distribution by understanding the fringes or the fringe pattern which is being formed then in biomedical application we see the diagnostic of surgical operation planning so we can plan the operation and people make the uh, print uh, this models and then do the doctors do the mock surgery on that first then really they go for the actual surgery and then design and fabrication of custom prosthesis and implant so that is another area and in manufacturing i have already told you about investment casting or gold that is there different kinds of patterns molds dies they can be directly or indirectly printed with uh, additive manufacturing systems you can produce copper iridium electrodes or some other kinds of electrodes and use them to deposit material etc etc so there are various applications we have seen that different kinds of applications are there i do do i do not like such applications this is just making fun of the technology but anyway it happens so these biomedical applications are Uh, you can see that this is the acquisition of ct and mri image this is how the image looks like now i can see that somebody was asking a question in the chat box <laughs> that can we convert jpg jpeg image to sql file somebody has asked this question the answer is that actually uh, this ct or mri images are the these gray scale images you can <coughs> correct so these are the gray scale images but the, there there is not one image there are sequence of images like you can see there are several images 1 2 3 4 5 so many images are there they are, they are in sequence like this like somebody does does the ct scan of your head so the image will be taken like this uh, after every few millimeters maybe 1 millimeter or 5 2 millimeters distance then all those images if you keep one over another the and use the software called mimix you can create a a jpeg uh, you can create a sql file uh, which which appears like this as as you can be shown in this picture and then you can use that sql file to create to run this rapid prototyping system and you will have these kinds of you know rp models made the different application there are pictures many pictures which i'll show you now So this this is an Indian manifold. This is made by long process, correct? Right? Long laminated object manufacturing. So this is this is made of some wood, uh, some 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 sorry, not wood. It is made of some sort of uh, uh, paper kind of material to display that what kind of we Indian is. Then this is a SLS made model wall. This is a lot of internal information. This is a medical implant made by stereolithography. This is made by SLS process once again with a different kind of material. Then this is a this is a resection tape plate. This is a biomedical application. This is a heat implant, silicon rubber molded heat implant. And this is a again a model. You can see the kind of geometry is there, and, and you can appreciate that uh, it won't be able to possibly for you create such a geometry using 3D printing kind of. Other than 3D printing kind of machine, then these are some uh, in medical sector. This is a 
heat implant made by electron beam additive manufacturing process. This is also made by electron beam additive manufacturing process. The kind of structure uh, you can see here, correct? Then this is made, these three are made by SLM process. And this is, this is actually the component which comes out from the SLM machine. But when you finish it by some non-conventional machining process, you get this kind of surface. This is a dental implant made by SLM process, EOS machine. Correct? Then we have these Indian components, this is aero engine. So these aero file kind of sections, aero blades, they can either be deposited or they can be repaired using direct energy deposition kind of direct powder blown technology kind of processes. Then there are some other examples which have been shown here. Then you can see that these are very complex uh, processes, correct? Very complex structures. You can see. This is a curved column. There are internal information here. This is another very typical component. You can see the kind of holes they are having. So they cannot be produced by any other process other than RP. And this is called a topologically optimized structure. So this, this can be done by RP. And if you want to do it by some CNC, you need more setups and you will use the accuracy of the components. So you can also produce functionally graded materials using 3D printing. That is the powder blown technology kind of processes. This is a tile which has been made by uh, one of the powder bed processes, SLM kind of system. So this is a vehicle. This vehicle actually uses this headlamp made of SLS process, correct? So then they are actually, you know, painting with metal paint, metal spray. So you are able to improve the strength as well as you are able to improve the surface quality. Like if there is a large component, you can make it two parts and you can glue the, glue the two parts together. This is another component uh, which we can see. There are a lot of details which one can do. This is finished and painted headlamp. So you can see that it is actually a plastic component, but it has been painted by uh, some metal paint and you get a metallic uh, finish and a very high, good quality surface roughness. Uh, that is everything. Then these are some beautiful artifacts, the way you, you have seen this video, you know. So they can be fabricated using SLS kind of machine, these, these artifacts have been made. Okay, now I, I this is this is the, uh, uh, I'll say, uh, 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 next generation additive manufacturing. That what is there, like what is the next, what, what really we can do next, correct? Right? The next generation additive manufacturing, we talk about uh, multi-functional multi-material products, correct, right? with different Embedded systems, we try to develop the smart components. What are the smart components? Smart components are those components which are having sensors implanted. And these sensors will give you signal about the health of the that particular component. So you will come to know that whether really this bearing is going to work anymore or not, or this component is likely to fail because if any crack starts propagating, inside a component the vibration pattern changes or the kind of signals you will get they will change. So that's how people want to develop now these 3D printed components with embedding the sensors and you will get this, the outcome and that will be that will be some sort of I will say smart component. So that is the next thing which can be done in 3D printing though many other developments are also parallelly going on in different directions and I will say that there are so many good applications which are being developed, a good, some new processes are being developed uh, for, for, for different applications, typically in case of biomedical applications. So what do we see? Do we see that complexity, of course the geometrical complexity of object to be manufactured uh, is not a limitation in rapid prototyping, correct? So in rapid prototyping or 3D printing, geometry is not a limitation, you can create anything, there is no no uh, issue in terms of uh, accessibility, there's no issue in terms of kind of shape you want to produce, but there are certain limitations. What are those limitations? These limitations are strength, correct? The strength of the component, typically in case of plastic components, it is not as high as you 
get in case of compression molding or in case of uh, injection molding processes. Correct? You don't get. The surface quality is definitely not high because of the stress stepping effect and accuracy is also something which is which is low because you there's an open deposition and along the z direction you you deposit layers and layers are always some integer multiple of the slice thickness correct so you there's definitely a variability there's a lot of accuracy inaccuracy along z direction and on xy platform also because you're depositing the layer and uh, and this, it's not constricted space like you have an injection molding or compression molding. So the accuracy is also not that high, correct? Now, in case of metal uh, processing, the strength of the component is not a limitation if you properly optimize the process parameters. It has already been shown in case of direct uh, this uh, metal deposition process or lens process that if you properly choose the parameters, the the, the microstructures developed are such that the strength of the component is very high. It is as good as it is. It is. Uh, it, is it is sometimes more than the force component. And of course, the load bearing tracks also you can design when you are actually depositing so that it can take better loads uh, than the force component. So those kinds of you know observations uh, or the literature has already reported those kinds of findings for metal components. So metal component strength is not that is not a problem. But of course, in plastic components, metal limit uh, strength is a problem. So that's how you know we we try to understand uh, these limitations of 3D printing processes. Now I'll talk about one of the research uh, which was done at IIT Delhi uh, in my super region. So that was an arthesis for club foot treatment, which I would like to explain to you. So this is the problem, you know, when the kid is born, uh, the kid is born like these kinds of foods, which are known as club foot. So this club foot, if you see, it is, it is, it is a three-dimensional deformity of the, of the, of the baby foot, uh, which are known as, they, so the foot are uh, twisted inward like this. Sometimes you have in one foot, sometimes it is there in both the foot. So if they are not treated, this is the kind of situation you have. And around 35,000 babies are born in India every year with this kind of problem. And around the globe, around 200,000 babies are born with this kind of problem every year. So it's, it's not a very huge problem, but it's not a small problem also. So various techniques are there. Operative techniques are there, treatment with frames are there, and there are serial casting. So the most popular method is the serial casting method, correct? It is known as Ponsetti method. So I will show you what is that method is. So it's Ponsetti technique, the serial casting and manipulation of the shape, and the fourth method by orthosis. So you can understand your own from these figures, operative techniques, how difficult they are. In the beginning, the bones are not fully grown. They are in the form of cartilages only, correct? This is the, this is the trade uh, treatment by frames, correct? So this is the Ponsetti technique. You can just have a look on this technique. That you, this is the foot. Every week, you know, the orthopedic surgeon will change the plaster like this. And the baby foot will change its shape from this to this. So, because in the beginning, the, the, the bones are not grown and they are cartilages, so you are able to mark the shape. But it has a tendency to relapse. It goes back. When you stop using this plaster, it will start going back. So, what do we do? People use, the kid has to wear this kind of shoes. And this is called braces, correct? So the two legs are tied together and uh, this is the situation and the kid has to wear it up to the age of four to five years and uh, there's a lot of problem uh, because of this. So uh, we have developed our own uh, technique to solve this problem. We want to remove the plaster because of the various problems which have been listed here. It is sometimes one kg weight and 
blood of swelling, ulcerations, and dehydration happens. Because this treatment starts just from the next day of the birth of the kid. So, you cannot wait. It starts just the next day from the birth of the kid. So, we, what, we, what do we prepare using the various designs and using the concept of 3D printing and using the concept of biomechanics of food? We first CAD model, you know, this kind of arthrosis. We can see there's a platform. This platform can move, move like this, you know, about this axis, about x axis, about about this axis, and about the what. So there's three motions. There are inversion, inversion, aversion, adduction, abduction, and and extension and flexion. These are the three motions of the foot. So you can achieve by this. So this is the kind of arthrosis which we have developed. Uh, we did it from rapid prototyping, later we made it from aluminium. And this is a club foot model. This is a club foot model of actual baby which was born uh, in some hospital. We have done the MRI scan of the foot and developed this uh, mold from uh, SLS process and filled the silicon rubber in that and we made this kind of model. Uh, this sometimes there's a deformity in the forefoot and the hind foot. So it can be the, this, this platform that I've shown here. This has been, you know, bro broken into two pieces now. So you, you can even adjust this. You can recover. Uh, you can treat this kind of deformity also. So basically, uh, six kids were identified in Delhi MCR zone or Chandigarh zone. And then we did made these club foot models. We did experiments using this torque wrench, and we could do the finite element analysis. And we did the clinical trials also. So using this orthosis, uh, three kids or five kids were done with the clinical trials, and we could treat the problem within within a week's time. And this because this the baby can use this. Uh, Orthosis from the from the thigh. There's a no need of wearing the uh, this braces, and the, the the there's no need to visit the doctor every week because these knobs can be rotated by the parents. Uh, they will be guided, and the parents will rotate these knobs, and they can morph the shape of the foot. It's own. That's how this was one of the. A good innovative work we did. So with plastic, if you make in 100 grams, you can do it. But with aluminium, when we did, we did it with 400 grams because there's a lot of air circulation and every other thing. So a lot of many problems they could be resolved, and the treatment becomes very fast. In one week, we could recover rather than uh, doing it for maybe 10 weeks. So this was uh, one of the top great innovations of in India. And there was a power. Of Shunya, there was a PT Now channel program in which there was a 30 minutes episode on this particular innovation. Then we developed the foot deformity measuring device also. So, uh, because how to measure the correction is taking place. So, what did we do? We developed this kind of system. Correct? So, if you use, so you can see here there are seven scales scale one, scale two, three, four, five, six, and seven scales are there. So if you put this thing on the foot of the baby for one, two minutes and you can take the measurement of that really the correction is taking place or not. So we have published papers based on these innovations. Everything is available online. So you can, those who are interested, they can refer the papers and you can understand these things. So with this, I, I stop and thank you very much for the, the kind of hearing, patients hearing of the lecture and I am here for five minutes more. If you have any question, we can discuss. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, first of all, we will take questions if we have any from the participants. Uh, one question is there from my answer. So, as uh, most of us are uh, working in uh, the similar areas, like uh, additive manufacturing and 3D printing. So, how a researcher can see that what kind of possibilities and gaps are there in which they can start their uh, 
knowledge that how they can proceed with the research perspective of this additive manufacturing. I can tell you, uh, this is a, this is not that simple actually, frankly speaking. Uh, in manufacturing domain, designing a good problem and an original problem is really very, very, very challenging. And uh, my students struggle for a minimum one and a half years to develop a good problem. Correct. So it's not simple that I can answer you like this in, in a minute or so. It is very yeah. difficult to design a good problem. One has to do a lot of literature survey, you have to work in lab, and then only you will come up with some innovative idea so that you can develop some original uh, original idea. Correct? Okay. And work on that. Yeah. Got it, got it. And okay. Anyone else, if you have any question, then please just ask because we have only a few minutes, then we will wind up. Rest. Okay, so uh, as we are not getting more questions from audience, so I would like to thank Professor P.M. Pande, sir was just sharing the expertise with us and all the participants sir? from yeah mr shubham do you have any questions good afternoon good afternoon sir yeah. sir i wanted to know that any further machining processes are required for surface finishing and strengthening of the component manufactured through editing manufacturing or not sir strengthening you cannot do by machining but sometimes people are doing some sort of unconventional machining I have shown you one example, uh, one of the example I have shown you, where people have done additive, uh, this thing, uh, they have done uh, unconventional machining to, to perform the uh, finishing on these components. First, I will show you again. So one example I have already shown you, that was this example. So you can, I am sharing the screen in this travel book. Can you see the picture? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. So you can see this is this is how the component when it comes from the SLM process, correct? And you have to do it in abrasive flow finishing kind of situation. You can finish the components and it, it is like this. So uh, machining means you do finishing operations. Any other question? Uh, anyone else? Uh, and I have also shared sir's bio uh, in the chat box. So if you have any further query, then you can also uh, ask to the sir in the future as well. So thank you so much. And on behalf of whole TQ uh, Engineering College Baswara section, as well as from our principal sir, Dr. Sivar sir, and our head of the department, Technical Engineer Dr. Jignesh Patel sir, would uh, thank Professor P.M. Pandey sir for sharing his expertise with us and all the participants for your patience hearing and all the dignitaries who participated in this webinar and the feedback link is there in this uh, chat box and remaining the same session will be uploaded on our college YouTube channel. So if you have missed or your one of colleague has been missed then you can also share that link so that he can share the, get the expertise of the participants. Thank you. Professor Pandey, sir. So, uh, I have also shared my webpage, uh, web.it.ac.in yes, and yeah. uh, slash delta pm Pandey. So, you can, some of the participants can visit that page and you can have a look on, you know, what are the different activities which are going on in my lab. Correct? Yeah. So, thank you very much, everyone, thank for you, uh, the interaction and giving me this opportunity. And thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. So, we are winding up here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Feedback link uh, page on